Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee and these are my books. So today's video is a middle grade horror reading vlog. So here I am introducing what books I will be reading for my middle grade horror experience because I've never really read middle grade before. I have read Rick Riordan and that's basically it for middle grade and so many people hype up middle grade horror and middle grade fantasy. So I want to do a middle grade fantasy reading vlog in November but because this is the month of spooks and scares and thrills and chills I thought middle grade horror was perfect for October. So the books I plan to read for this vlog are Hide and Seeker and then the first two books in this series. I don't know if it's called the Small Spaces series, but you know what I'm talking about. You've seen these books before. They're really popular. So I have Small Spaces here and I have Dead Voices here. Both of these covers, along with the cover of Hide and Seeker, fantastic. I think middle grade has some of the best covers ever. Middle grade and YA covers are so superior to adult horror covers. So I am very excited to give this a go. I love atmospheric horror and I've heard that middle grade has great atmosphere because you know they can't really do the gore they can't really do the crazy things happening in adult horror so they gotta rely on that atmosphere and i love an atmosphere so i'm not really gonna give you synopses of these books in the intro because i'll give you a synopsis as i'm reading them so let's uh cut to me actually reading these books hello i am checking in because i'm about 40 percent of the way through hide and seeker and i am so pleasantly surprised by this book. Now, I didn't think that I would hate this book because of this book. I was just very skeptical about middle grade horror in general. And I'm really, really enjoying my time with Hide and Seeker. Like, it's opening up the door to so many more books if I do enjoy middle grade horror. So I am having a great time. Let me tell you a little bit about what it is about. So we are following a bunch of kids. Um, they are about sixth grade, I believe. And their friend has gone missing about a year ago and then was found uh, a couple days after they went missing. However, they came back kind of weird. His name is Z and Z is a little, a little odd now. And so they're going, it's now been over a year since he came back and they're going to celebrate Z's birthday. And there's these ice creams that they have that talk about this game that kids love to play. This is the most popular party game ever. It's called hide and seek, but it has like a weird chance you have to make before you play hide and seek. It's super freaking creepy. And so they go to Z's house for his birthday party. Z is still in his room. He's not coming out. They do this weird hide and seek game on the ice cream wrapper and then a bunch of stuff happens. <laughs> um, but that's like the lead up into the book. That's the beginning premise. Um, and so it's creepy kids games, a weird missing story. Kids are going missing and there's possibly a monster, possibly a haunting. I don't really know what's going on. Um, but this, sorry, Teddy is like scratching the wall if you hear that. But this book is also doing a lot of really cool things with just social issues in general. We're getting a lot of conversations about poverty and how poverty is impacting mental health. And so I'm, I'm loving this book. I think the characters are awesome. I think that it's really spooky. Like the atmosphere is so scary. I'm listening to the audiobook and I really am enjoying the audiobook. It's quite slow though. Like I wish I could push it past three times speed. I'm on Libby, so it's maxing out at three times speed. I feel like three times speed is feeling like two times speed because the narrator is quite slow but that's my only complaint not a real complaint because most people don't listen to it super fast like I do I'm just a weirdo um but he makes so many creepy voices for the creepy moments and now Teddy is scratching the couch Teddy I'm trying to film I'm talking to my phone um, but then like I was saying the narrator is making a lot of really cool creepy voices like he's making the creepy moments feel very very creepy and I'm saying the word creepy so many times but that is the best way to talk about this book it is creepy um so I'm gonna keep reading it but I just wanted to let you know that I am so pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying this book I finished hide and seeker I actually finished it last night it is the next morning because um, I was playing Disney Dreamlight Valley on my Switch and I really like listening to an audiobook while I play that game because I've gotten to the part where a lot of it is, I don't want to say monotonous because it's really fun still, but basically it's mindless enough that I can listen to an audiobook while I play. 
and it was the best vibes. So I actually finished this book at like one in the morning and it was very spooky to be reading at one in the morning. I am so, like I said earlier, so pleasantly surprised that I am really liking this middle grade horror. I really liked it. Hide and Seeker is a four star book for me. It's probably in between 3.5 and four. I'm going with four um, because overall I think I think it's closer to a four, but I just wanted to let you know I was debating between a 3.5 and a four. Um, so what really worked for me, the atmosphere was so good. I loved the audiobook. I loved the creepy voices that the narrator was doing. I thought the characters were really fun to read about. I thought this book did, did a lot of interesting and important things with grief and poverty in this story. Um, and I thought the whole idea of making the hide and seek game that kids play incredibly creepy was like genius loved that because so I loved playing hide and seek as a kid and so it's like if I was in the age demographic that read you know this is meant for so if I was like I, I don't know is middle grade meant for like 12 year olds if I was 12 and reading this book I know I would be trying to get all my friends to play a spooky game of hide and seek um so totally I think this is great for for kids great for adults to read I am a 26 year old woman and I enjoyed this book um things the reason why it's not like a five star is just genre constraints of it being middle grade because you know I, I I like extreme horror a lot of the times I like atmospheric horror too so that's why this was enjoyable because of the atmosphere but I like wish it went spookier than it did at times but that's not the book's fault you know that's not the book's fault because it's a middle grade horror they're not going to traumatize the middle grade readers um but because I rate based off of enjoyment that means it can't get a five star for me but a four star is still a wonderful rating a really really great re rating and it makes me so curious to try out more middle grade horror because sometimes it's difficult to know when a horror book is going to have a great atmosphere and i love being immersed in a great atmosphere and it seems like i mean my hypothesis is the way that middle grade makes horror because they can't include like super explicit horrific scenes is through a creepy atmosphere so therefore maybe middle grade horror is the place to go when I'm feeling like an atmospheric read. But overall, I really, really enjoyed Hide and Seeker. I would recommend this to horror lovers of all ages. And it was a, a super fun time. I'm glad I read it. Hello, I am checking in because I am, uh, should have checked before I started this clip. I'm 85 pages in small spaces and there's only 200 pages so that's like almost halfway. Um, I'm really enjoying this so far. It's got a book within a book structure going on and I really enjoy the book within the book and the book outside the book. Um, so a bit of a frame narrative. I'm, I'm really liking the main character. I like the other characters that the main character is around. I'm excited to see their character relationships grow throughout this book and maybe throughout the series because this is a series. I will be reading book two for this video as well, but currently I'm unsure if the series follows the same characters or if it's more like a romance series where each book is like a new set of characters. We'll see. But so far we have, as you can kind of tell from the cover, we have creepy farm vibes, creepy scarecrow vibes, and I'm loving the atmosphere, loving the setting. And again, I think the character moments in this book are really, really excelling because I care so much just in these first 85 pages about um you know this main girl's relationship with her father this main girl's progress or lack of progress in making friends with her classmates so to tell you a little bit about what this is about a girl who is in middle school I think it's middle school I just am not sure what grade exactly it's said it in the book I just forget but um I think she's around 12. She is going to the river just to kind of go swim blow up some steam and she sees this woman like hysterically crying throwing this cool looking book in the river and like saying nonsense saying like they told me to do this they told me it would stop blah 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 and she's like what the heck woman so she kind of takes the book out from the river and is like you gotta donate your books you know being a good kid you gotta donate those books she starts reading the book and that's where the book within a book structure happens and she goes on a field trip to a farm and it seems like the book within a book the creepy stuff that's going on is taking place on this farm that she's currently on a school field trip at 
So I am really enjoying this so far. I'll check in. I think when I finish the book, since I'm already almost halfway through, but um, I just wanted to let you know it has a strong start. However, it's not like horrific yet. We're just like setting up that atmosphere. But because I care so much about the character dynamics, I'm okay that it hasn't nothing like super horrific or creepy or anything like that has happened so far. I think this is going to be one of those books where the creepy stuff is like the climax of the book and not so much um, scattered throughout. I finished Small Spaces. It was so good. It made me cry at the end. I will not be telling you if they were happy tears or sad tears, but it did make me cry. So obviously I was really emotionally connected, emotionally invested in this story. Um, it was, I think at the beginning I mentioned like, oh, maybe this is one of those books that has like one big scary climax, but it's not like scary throughout. And right after I said that, I swear in the next 10 pages, a lot of super creepy and scary stuff started happening. So this does have a lot of scares throughout the book, has a great atmosphere, A plus atmosphere. The character relationships are so cute and so charming and I just care so much about them. And like, it was just, I loved it. I loved this story. Um, and to clear up, I think in the beginning too, I was like, I don't know what grade they're in. They're in sixth grade. This is about a bunch of sixth graders. I think this book is like kind of similar to um, T. Kingfisher's writing and it's, it's especially the Twisted Ones, The Hollow Places, and even some Coraline vibes. I haven't read the Coraline book, but just the Coraline movie. Um, it kind of has similar vibes to all of those. So if you like any of those books or movies, um, I think you should definitely check this book out. I mean, this book is so popular for a reason. It's fantastic. I'm like debating between 4.5 and 5 stars. I think I'm going to give it 4.5 because you know what? I think I'm going to give it 5. Like I couldn't even just name a reason for why I was going to give it 4.5. I loved this book. It's like a very, it's middle grade. So, you know, you're, you're not going to want to go into this book thinking it's going to scare the pants off of you. It's middle grade. It's meant for like 12 year olds. Um, but I just thought this was such a charming, fantastic story with lots of creepy moments. I'm giving it five stars. I loved it. And so I am moving on now to book two in this series, which I'm very excited about since I loved book one so much. And book two is called Dead Voices. And I did just read the back. So I do know now that it does follow the same like kids that it, uh, Small Spaces followed. And in Dead Voices, I believe that they go to a ski resort. And so it's a snowy setting and stuff happens there. <laughs> I don't really know beyond that. Um, I think at least this book kind of was like um, portal horror or portal fantasy, portal horror. I don't know if that um, translates over into horror, but portal fantasy is basically when a character like gets transported to a magical realm from the normal realm. And that's kind of what this is, you know, portal fantasy, but in a horror book. And I think based off of the back, something similar is going on in this story. So maybe all of these books are focusing on like these different realms that the kids travel to. Um, but I enjoyed the first one so much, five stars. And so I'm so excited to read this one, especially because I love snowy settings. Snowy settings are like the best settings ever. So I'm excited to experience some snowy spooks. Hello, it is the next morning, um, but I wanted to check in because last night I did finish Dead Voices. Um, I loved it. I just finished it so late. I didn't want to update you so late. It was like one in the morning, two in the morning. I don't know. But the vibes of reading this book last night were amazing, impeccable, because I got the audiobook. And so at first I was like following along in the book with the audiobook in bed. And then I was like, you know what would make this super spooky and super fun? I turned off the lights and then was just listening to the audiobook in the dark in bed late at night. And it was so good. So good. I'm giving it four stars. So I did like small spaces more than dead voices. Um, simply because in small spaces we're seeing the characters kind of come together and become friends and I found that so wholesome and so amazing and I just loved it so much the character moments were so great and in dead voices they're already friends so we didn't see as much like 
character development in their personal relationships but they they still have lots of cute character moments it's just i felt like small spaces hit me harder in the feels than dead voices did but i still really really love dead voices so basically the, the premise is these kids are going on a ski resort on um, vacation with their families and the ski resort turns out to maybe be haunted and they get snowed in and they find out that the ski resort used to be this really horrible orphanage and there's ghost vibes, there are creepy mirrors, there are dead voices, hence the name of the book, you know? Um, but it, it was just so good. Um, four stars, really enjoyed it. And with that, I'm all done reading my books for this middle grade reading blog. So to quickly wrap up my thoughts, um, Teddy's rolling around. Um, I read Hide and Seeker and gave it four stars. Then I read Small Spaces and gave it five stars. And then I read Dead Voices and gave it four stars. This is my first time ever reading middle grade horror and I can't believe I got two four stars and a five star. Like suddenly I have this whole new genre to explore. And so please, if you have read middle grade horror before you have some middle grade horror recs, leave me some comments down below and let me know what I should read next because I've pretty much exhausted the list of middle grade horror that I knew about, which was only Hide and Seeker and this Small Spaces series. I do have two more books in the Small Spaces series to read, but I'm sure there's a million other middle grade horror books out there that are fantastic. I really want to explore the genre more because I had such a good time in this reading blog and I'm so happy it was so successful. I'm not gonna lie, part of me when I started this reading blog was so nervous that I was gonna hate everything and it was just gonna be scrapped. The whole video was just gonna be scrapped because I just, I didn't understand how middle grade could be fun for adults to read. Um, no shade to people who love middle grade, you know, I just didn't really get it. I was like, but they're, they're kid books. I get it now. I get it now. I'm a middle grade lover. I love these these books. Small Spaces, five stars. I mean, this really was the star of the show in this video. I absolutely loved it. I'd highly recommend this to everybody. It was so good. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe for more content and let me know in the comments again what middle grade horror I should read next. I'll see you next time. Bye!